In 1983, Konami released an arcade game called Track and Field. For those who don't remember it, the aim of Track and Field was to give yourself a repetitive strain injury by hammering buttons as quickly as possible. Now nowadays, this seems like a strange game, but you have to remember that back then the Cold War was still going, and then shoulder pads seemed like a really good idea. Track and Field proved to be popular and spawned a few imitators, and filled with concern that gamers were turning their young fingers into fleshy pretzels with all the button bashing, a well-meaning but misguided developer replaced the constant pounding of buttons with the frantic waggling of joysticks, giving them a chance to rest their weary digits and fuck up their wrists instead. From that non-specified day forward, the two control systems walked hand in hand through the world of 80s gaming, releasing a number of successful albums and performing in packed out stadiums around the world. But eventually the two parted ways as joystick waggling left the band to pursue his own solo career Wait, hang on a second, that's Iron Maiden. Oh. Anyway, since the split, the two have fared very differently. Button bashing, not to be confused with button mashing, which is how my eight-year-old brother beat me at Tekken that one time and why he very nearly didn't live to see his ninth birthday, is a treasured staple of video games that never seems to have fallen out of favour. Which is odd, because to me, button bashing is like a creepy uncle offering you sweets in a slightly sinister fashion. It's become a shortcut for lazy developers whenever a character needs to do something a little bit strenuous, like running, or winning a grapple, or passing a kidney stone, and it turns up everywhere. Metal Gear Solid has some, uh, so does God of War, No More Heroes, Resident Evil 4, Dark Sector, Guitar Hero. Well, the way I play Guitar Hero anyway. The list goes on and on, but it is fun to draw. Some games are pretty much all button bashing. There was so much of it in Fahrenheit, for example, I thought I was going to snap my keyboard. But then again, Fahrenheit is a game that pits a Mayan death cult against mainframes from the 1980s. Anyway, joystick waggling, on the other hand, faded into obscurity as the humble joystick was replaced by the D-pad-based controllers championed by Nintendo. These days, the only place you're likely to find a joystick is in a flight simulator, and when in control of an F-22 Raptor, waggling the joystick will not end well. But, joystick waggling has passed on the baton of tortuous flaming to an apprentice, a spiritual successor, if you will. The Wii. The very company whose cruciform creation spelled the doom of the joystick has taken up the torch it dropped when it was bludgeoned to death with its own hubris. If anything, the Wii Remote is like the advanced form of the joystick, and the waggling thereof has evolved in step. No more are we constrained to the simple lateral waggling of yesteryear, no sir! Now we can waggle freely in three dimensions, and look like a right tit while doing it. The thing with joystick waggling is, it may have been a little taxing on the arms at times, but it was never embarrassing before. Perhaps that's why the Wii really only appeals to children, fanboys, and drunk people. The thing with button bashing, and with joystick waggling, is they are both products of their time, and the fact they've survived into the modern day, albeit in new sleeker forms, is either a testament to their staying power, or a sign that the video game industry ran out of ideas about 20 years ago. Personally, I'd like to see them both scoured from the face of the earth, but as that would mean that the aforementioned lazy developers would have to come up with something new, I can't see it happening anytime soon.